Hello everyone, this is Jason from Primetime Aquatics. In this video, we're going to be looking at what I think is an awesome fish, and that is Neolamprologus brichardi. It is a really cool fish from Lake Tanganyika. I think you're going to enjoy it, so stay tuned. So this is Neolamprologus brichardi. It's also known as the Princess Cichlid, or the Princess of Burundi, or the Fairy Cichlid. The tank that you're looking at is a 37 gallon. So a 37 gallon has roughly the same dimensions as a 20 long or a 29, it's just a lot taller. One thing you'll notice by looking at this tank, it really is set up for breeding. It is certainly not a display tank, but I found that tanks that look like this often produce a lot of healthy fry and they have lots of things to pick on and eat and you're gonna see that throughout this video. The Brichardi come from Lake Tanganyika in Africa. The water parameters there have a high pH above eight the water is relatively hard and so we try to mimic those water parameters in our tanks and luckily enough where we live the water is fairly close to what you'd find in Lake Tanganyika. Now these fish, the Brichardi, the males are going to get somewhere around three to four inches in your typical aquarium. The females will stay slightly smaller. I think what makes them so awesome is the colors. Both the males and the females have awesome color. The males tend to have a little bit more color and the trailers on their fins tend to be a little bit longer. But they both have this nice really silver type color and you can see, especially in some of the adults, they get kind of a white iridescence to the tips of their fins. There's a little bit of yellow and blue and they've got these pretty blue eyes and they're really striking fish, especially when you have multiples in a larger setup. We are often asked what types of fish can go with shell dwellers. We've got lots of shell dwellers in our fish room, and this is a great fish that would be an awesome tank mate for some of the shell dwellers that are really popular right now, such as Neolumpralagus multifasciatus, the Maltese, Brevis, Similis, Signatus. There are so many different types of shell dwellers, and these fish are an awesome tank mate because the shell dwellers like to stay closer to the bottom. They're going to be inhabiting the shells closer to the substrate. And the Brichardi, as you can see here, they like that mid water. They like to be around rocks. So if you have a large enough tank, it could potentially work out. We've got shell dwellers on the bottom, and the Brichardi are kind of in the rocks in the mid water, and that can really look good. Other really good tank mates might be something like Cyprochromus leptosoma or the Lelupi or maybe some Julietochromus, something like Reagani or Orinatus could be really great options. Transcriptus. Another couple of really good options would be Altolamprologus calvus or Compressiceps. Now the calvus and Compressiceps, if they're kept in the same tank, are probably going to prey on any type of Brichardi babies and the other fish might as well. But if you've got a large enough setup or you're just looking to set up a Lake Tanganyikan biotope, all the fish that we've mentioned so far might be really good options. Now we've done a number of species profiles on fish that would go really well with Neolamprologus brichardi. I'm going to put those in the description below in case you want more information about how to raise them. I will also put a pinned comment in the comment section. Definitely check those out if you're looking for tank mates for the brichardi. Now, when it comes to water parameters, I've already mentioned the parameters of Lake Tanganyika. In our fish room, our temperatures in our fish tanks say right around 78 to 80 degrees most of the time. The pH is right around an 8.2. These fish love that pH. They can actually go a little bit higher than that. Water hardness, they like hard water. Our water is right around 10 degrees general hardness as well as carbonate hardness, which puts us right around 180 parts per million, which is fairly hard water. They've been doing great. They look great. They've been breeding in those water parameters. When it comes to overall water quality, I have found that most Lake Tanganyikan fish need a well cycled tank. They are not good fish to put in a brand new tank. So the nitrogen cycle should be uh, well established. So no ammonia, no nitrites. Nitrates, we try to keep our nitrates under 20 parts per million and it's been working out really well for them. Feeding Brichardi is a fairly straightforward process. We have found that they like standard flake foods pellet foods, we feed some New Life Spectrum pellets, we feed standard flake foods. What they really like, even the adults, is live baby brine shrimp. And in fact, in this video, you can see some of them still hanging around from an earlier feeding in the day. Uh, they can stay around for hours after you initially feed them. and You can see them snacking on them from time to time. But even the adults will appreciate live baby brine shrimp. And of course, the, the fry and the juveniles love it as well. They also like frozen brine shrimp. Uh, they really like frozen bloodworms occasionally. So they're not picky, picky eaters at all. 
Uh, they're, they're really relatively easy to feed. Tank size, I mentioned this at the beginning of the video, but we are looking at a 37 gallon. I think this tank works out fairly well because it is so tall, it provides some space for the babies, uh, provides some space for the adults. The footprint isn't huge because it's the same footprint as a 20 long. I would prefer if we we're if we were going to do this again and I had the space, I would really like a 40 gallon breeder for these fish just to give them a little bit more surface area, a little bit more space to kind of spread out. But these fish would do really good in your standard 40 gallon breeders or above. Maybe if you had a pair, you could do a 20 long, but you're really pushing it there because if they start having babies, you could potentially have some issues later on if the tank becomes overcrowded. So 40 gallon breeder might be the minimum that I would recommend. When it comes to setting up your tank, you can see here, again, this tank is not set up to be a display tank. This tank is set up to be a breeding tank. And what we have done is we've got standard gravel. Obviously, for a Lake Tang and Yikin tank, it'd be really nice to have some sand, especially if it was lighter in color. It might show off the colors of these fish a little bit more. They might be more brightly colored with a lighter substrate. That might be ideal, but they've been working fine on the gravel. They don't interact with the substrate a lot, so having gravel is not the end of the world. It's not as critical as, let's say, shell dwellers where you really want that, that sand so that they can move it around. Uh, rock work, they certainly appreciate it. These fish will breed both in rocks and on the substrate. You can see here, I've got a little bit of java moss there. Live plants would work fine. This is a fish that generally, at least from my experience, doesn't really pick on or eat live plants. So if you want to put some crypts in there or some anubias or jungle val, they'd most likely leave it alone. It's not like they're digging a lot in the substrate. So live plants is certainly an option if the other fish that you have in the tank will leave them alone as well. The java moss that we have in there is really for the fry. You'll constantly see throughout this video that the fish are picking off the surfaces of the rocks. There's a little bit of black beard algae in there. I don't mind that at all in a breeding tank because it houses microorganisms. The moss is in there for the same reason. So it's been working out really well. You could even put a little bit of driftwood in there if you wanted to, although it might not be biotope uh, appropriate. It's fine. Whether you want to use live plants, fake plants, rocks, uh, as long as they've got a place to hide, uh, especially the fry and the juveniles, sometimes they like to retreat into the rocky areas. So I found that to be a really uh, nice thing to have for them uh, so they can interact. Let's talk a little bit more specifically about breeding Bichardi. This is a relatively easy fish to breed, provided that your water parameters are established. And of course, you've got males and females. Sometimes the easiest way to achieve that is to get yourself a 40 gallon breeder or a 55 gallon get yourself four or five juvenile brachardi, let them grow up, they will begin to, as long as you've got males and females, they will most likely begin to spawn. Uh, again, the rock work certainly helps that. I've found them to be secretive spawners. I've never actually seen them spawn, but generally what happens is you'll start to see babies appearing uh, from the crevices of the rock. Sometimes they will actually use the substrate to spawn, but I have found that they, 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 they spawn in the rocks. Uh, the babies, when they are uh, finally free swimming, and that usually takes after they lay the eggs, you're probably looking at around three days or so, and you might start to find babies. Usually a few days after that, up to a week, they'll start to be free swimming, and at that point, they're starting to munch on the live baby brine. I have found that to be an excellent food source for most fry, and the brachardi are no different. So they are very small when they're first born. So again, if you've got other fish in the tank besides the brachardi, they might get preyed upon. The really interesting thing, and I think one of the coolest things about this fish by far, is if you look at this tank, you will see that there's multiple generations in the tank. In some ways, they're sort of like Maltese, but in a sense, even more interesting because what happens is the community of fish will sometimes raise the fry and protect the fry. So it's not just the parents, but generations of fish born before will protect the fry that are more recent. So it's really kind of cool. Now there are limits to that. If you have a really overcrowded tank, you might start to see a little bit of fry predation, but for the most part, they get along fairly well. Usually within a couple weeks, you can switch the fry over from live baby brine to flake food. But again, because they're always reproducing, I usually feed live baby brine in this tank twice a day, just in case there are any babies that are, that are just being born. So this is a great fish, lots of color, great personality, beautiful as they get older, a lot of good potential tank mates. If you have an opportunity to get them, I highly recommend it. If there are any issues, it might actually be the breeding in, in the sense that after a while, especially if you have a large 
larger tank, they could potentially overrun the tank with Fry. They breed relatively easily once they get started. So it's something you have to keep an eye on if you've got a 125 or a 150, you know, six foot tank. Uh, you might start to have a lot of these things over time, but it is so much fun watching their communal aspects. Highly recommend the fish if you have a chance to get them. So if you enjoyed this video, share, subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one.